Uh, good evening and God's blessings to each and every one of you. We're going to start tonight's show off with uh, Rusty Gilliam doing I'm Not My Problem Anymore. And then we'll get into our sermon and Bible study uh, sermon. Uh, it is written. So here we go. This is Rusty Gilliam. songs that Rusty does. Uh, matter of fact, back when I was doing uh, DJing on a radio show that uh, Sister Sheila does now, I played that song till I probably wore it out. But you know, you can't wear a good song out. 
let's get into the Bible study uh, sermon that I've we got going on tonight, Shepherd's Chapel. This is, it is written. Jesus often answered a question. Now, with the question. He would often begin his response to a question with, Have you not read? Then Jesus would say, It is written. And he would give a quote from the Old Testament scripture that would answer their question. If they did not know what is written, the, 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 the danger is that men start making up their own rules. These rules are often referred to as traditions of men. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were good at making up their own rules. Unfortunately, the traditions of men often replace the Word of God. Let's begin our study uh, with the book of Matthew. In Matthew 4 and 1 it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. 2 says, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Jesus was physically weak. He was starving. Watch how Satan attacks what he perceives to be a weakness. He knows and will attack your weakness as well. Church, listen to me now. Matthew 4 and 3 says, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made of bread. For says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word I say again, but, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus was hungry. Satan attempts to the tempt of Jesus in two turning stones into bread to satisfy his hunger. Matthew 4 and 5 tells us, Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city and listen, setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. What's this? Satan is, question, is quoting scripture? Yo, ho, ho. He is quoting scripture, but he isn't quoting scripture accurately. Psalms 91 11 tells us, does, doesn't say, lest at any time. He also omitted to keep thee in all thy ways. Satan will twist scripture. He will, 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 is trying to, 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 to talk. Jesus into jumping off the high pinnacle because at any time God's angels will catch you. Matthew 4 and 7 says, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil taketh him up into the exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them. We learn something else about Satan in this verse. He doesn't give up easily. The devil is very persistent now. Matthew 4 9 it says, And saith unto him, All these things I will give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The Antichrist comes in, in peacefully and prosperously. Daniels 8 and 24 through 25 he will promise you anything if you will fall down and worship him learn from Jesus how to handle Satan people Matthew 4 10 tells us then saith Jesus unto him get thee hence Satan for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve 11 tells us then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. 
Jesus did not argue with Satan. He did not try to reason with Satan. Jesus simply said in so many words, Get thee behind me, Satan. Church, when Satan gets in your face, you should say, Get behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, I said, Get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist certainly knew what was written. Let's turn to uh, chapter 11 in the same book, Matthews 11 and 1, and 11, 2, and 11, 3. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his own disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or should we look for another? Many folks have trouble understanding this verse. They think that the Baptist is asking, Are you the Messiah? John recognized who he was at six months old. His mother, Elizabeth's wound, Luke 1 and 41, John baptized Jesus and heard God's voice, Matthew 3, 13 through 17. They were first cousins. John knew from uh, what was written that there would be two adverts. Uh, he, was, he was asking in the first advent or in the second advent. Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. When it comes to hearing the word of God, we are still poor. That is to say needy in need of. Matthews 11, 6 tells us, And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And they departed. Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft remnant? Behold! They that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses. But what ye went out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. John's faith was, faith was blown around like a reed in the wind. He was steadfast. John wore camel's hair, not fancy soft clothes, as you might find in the palace. The spirit of Elijah rested on John the Baptist. John was a prophet indeed. Matthew 11 and 10 tells us, For this is he of whom it is written, Behold! I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thee thy way before thee. Isaiah prophesied of John the Baptist, that one that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight is the desert, a highway for our God. Isaiah 40 and 3. It is written, men of often forget what it is written in God's word, they prefer their own words. So let's go back to the book of Mark. Mark 7 and 1 tells us, Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread and, def and defiled, that is said 
is to say with unwashing hands they found fault we aren't talking about the disciples of Jesus eating with dirty hands they found fault because his disciples weren't ceremonially washing their hands accordingly to the tradition their ceremonial ceremonial washing wasn't by God's commands <coughs> excuse me Mark 7 and 3 tells us for the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands oft eat not holding the tradition of the elders and when they come from the market except they wash they eat not and many other things there be which they have received to hold and the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of the tables these washings are not written in the word of God this is a danger when men don't know what is written in the word they start making things up out of their own mind Mark 7 and 5 says then the Pharisees and scribes asked him why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders but eat bread with unwashing hands he answered and said unto him well hath Isaiah uh, prophesied uh, you hypocrites as it is written of this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. People, that is exactly what is written in Isaiah 29:13. The commandments of men had replaced the commandments of God. Mark 7 and 8 tells us. And 7 and 9 tells us, it says, For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such things alike ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Jesus nailed them in their folly with what what is written truth uh, despise falsehoods now see look he isn't finished with them yet <laughs> far from it Mark 7 and 10 tells us uh, for Moses said honor thy father and thy mother and whosoever curseth his father or mother let him die the death 11 says but Ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corbin, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. Corbin is a gift to the church. Moses said, Honor thy mother and thy father. But the Pharisees were saying, If, you're, if you make a gift to the church rather than taking care of your parents, you are free from sin. Their traditions were changing the word of God. That is very, very dangerous. Always stick what is written with God's word. Let's turn to chapter 9. Mark 9, 11. And they asked him, saying, What say the scribes that Elias must come first? See, it was written in Malachi 4 or 5 that Elijah would return before Jesus. The spirit of Elijah was upon John the Baptist. Mark 9 and 12 tells us, And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things. And how it is written, of the son of man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught and 13 tells us but I say unto you that Elias is indeed come and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed as it is written of him 
They beheaded John the Baptist. They crucified Jesus on the cross. Why? It was written. Psalms uh, 22 prophesies the, the, the crucifixion down to the soldiers gambling for his clothing. He's, he, he's, I, he, Isaiah 53 tells us that he took the stripes and we received the healing. In conclusion, let's turn to the book of Luke. Luke 19, 28, And when he had thus spoken, he went before according up to Jerusalem. They were making their way towards Jerusalem. Jesus had a date to keep in Jerusalem. It was called the crucifixion. Luke 19 and 29 tells us, And it came to pass when he was to come nigh in the Belophage and in Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering you shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat loose him, and bring him hither. Prophecy was being fulfilled. It was written in Zechariah 9, 9, Behold, Thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass. This is the first advent. It is written in Zechariah 9 and 10. His uh, dominion shall be from sea to ever even the two sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. This will be the second advent when he returns as the king of kings and the lord of lords. Luke 19 and 31 tells us, And if any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found even, and he said unto them, Was this divine planning? <laughs> you bet. God was leaving nothing to chance. God's word was always, listen, God's word always comes to pass exactly as it is written. The question is, have you read? Luke 19 and 33 tells us, and as they were loose the colt, the owners there unto said, why loose ye the colt? The owners thinking their donkey is being stolen. And they said the Lord hath need of him. Now see, this would be the end of the conversation. No more questions would be asked. It was written. Luke 19.35 tells us, And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. They fashioned a saddle of sorts out of their garments. The king cometh late, lowly riding on an ass. Zechariah 9.9, 9, it was written. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert of the highway for our Lord. That was in Isaiah 40 and 3. It was written. Luke 19:37, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that he had seen. The people witnessed miracle and miracle. <laughs> they began to cry aloud, Hosanna! to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Matthew 21 and 9. Why? It was written. Psalms 118, 25 through 26. Now in Luke 19 and 38, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the 
name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory to the highest. Now let's skip all the way to verse 45. Luke 19:45 says, And he went to the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and made that bought and sang unto them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, and you have made it into a den of thieves. It is written in Isaiah 56, 7. Have you read? Why? Brothers and sisters, because it is written. I'm Bishop Angelo Cabrazi, of the Crusaders for Jesus, Full Armor Gospel Ministry. I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, this evening. Hope that you got something out of it, and that you will realize that uh, all words that come from the Word of God are true, and that. Uh, no matter what I say, or any other pastor says, or anybody else tells you, if they cannot back it up with the Word of God, don't believe it. Don't go with it. Always go with what is, is found in the Word of God, and you'll be all right. I know that for a fact. Here I sit in this illness day to day with a smile on my face, broke, hungry, sick. I feel like the prophet Job. I lost my business, lost my wife, lost my money, but I haven't lost my faith. And I know what the word of God says brothers and sisters my question to you have you read do you know why because it is written peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you until we uh, meet again good night Thank you.